Hi, everybody, and welcome inside the New York Bobcats locker room here at the Twin Rings at Eisenhower Park. Carmen Vachana with you, and alongside me, as always, is New York Bobcats head coach and general manager Craig Doremus, who joins us for the uh, first installment of Coach's Quarter here in 2016. Craig, I know it's been a while since the holiday break. It feels like forever and since the last time we did uh, one of these, but, you know, let's get right into it. 2015, if you can, in a nutshell, I know, you know, this team's seen some good, seen some, some bad, some highs, some lows, just your typical, you know, flow of junior hockey, a couple winning streaks, a couple losing streaks, but all in all, the first half of the season, you guys, you know, sit, you know, in a good spot here at the South, you know, EHL South Conference and, you know, uh, are in a playoff position, but just what your overall thoughts in 2015? Uh, obviously, like you said, we've been through our peaks and valleys thus far. Um, I think the most important thing that Bobby and I have taken from the first half of the season is we see a good hockey team. We see a team with a ton of potential, a team that should make a, a really start, uh, strong push for the playoffs here and obviously compete for an EHL championship. Like you said, we've battled injuries, some nicks and knacks, and some peaks and valleys of good play and poor play. But I think that's pretty common throughout junior hockey, especially when you talk about this age demographic. Um, but pleased at where we are, pleased at where our locker room is right now on and off the ice, and just really excited to head up to New Hampshire this weekend for three big games. Going into that holiday break, I know it was a long time, and like you were saying before, it was good just to get the guys away from the rink a little bit, just kind of decompress from hockey. And, you know, the guys were able to go in on a positive note, three straight wins. It was a big uh, home home weekend against the Philadelphia Little Flyers. You were able to earn the split in that second game. It was a come-from-behind win. And then uh, in home-and-home home against the New Jersey Rockets, a young, talented club, and you guys were able to sweep them. You know, So going into that break, I mean, it just kind of felt a little bit more positive and a little bit more upbeat for the guys to you know, go, go back home on, on three straight wins. Oh, absolutely. And, and getting a win versus the Little Flyers here is a home uh, very important to us. Obviously, they're a very good team, and they've done a, a great job here for the last couple of years under Coach Rocky Russo. Uh, we were able to battle back, get the split at home, come from behind. A lot of good things in that victory. And for us, what's most important is it gives us a chance to even the season series. We have one more game with them. Um, and then it led into a great weekend against the Rockets. Two hard-fought games, like you said. The Rockets, very talented roster, um, do a good job with their program, and it's a good hockey team. For us to go to their barn and get a victory and then come here and, and capture the sweep for us was, was big heading into the break, especially considering the lineup and the injuries we were dealing with at that time. And, and like you said, you want to go into the break feeling good about yourself and uh, feeling confident about getting back and excited to get back on the ice. Coming back from the break, you guys opened up against the New York Apicor, you know, division rival. Obviously, there's no love lost between these two clubs, and you had some success against them earlier on in the year. But, again, who knows coming out of the break, guys coming in, guys coming out, and you hand handled them pretty, uh, you know, pretty good there. You guys were able to run away that with uh, the victory, and, you know, it was a little bit back, a little bit even, if you would, you know, in the first half of the game, but, you know, Thomas Dunn gets a hat trick, and you guys kind of run away with it. Just, you know, your thoughts about that game. Uh, anytime you have the apple corn, the Bobcats, like I said, you can throw standings out. It's going to be a hard forward emotional game. I'm really happy with how our guys kept the composure for the most part during the game, um, especially early on when we went down two goals. Uh, I stress to the guys, you know, going into the week that it's a program game. They're, they're close to us demographically. Obviously, it's an important uh, game in the marketplace, and for us, I think it marks the first time in franchise history that, the Bobcats have swept Apple Corn a season series. I think it marked seven straight wins for us over those guys. So that's important to us and something we didn't lose sight of. Um, like I said, go down early, respond through some adversity, knock off some rust, and able to respond with eight unanswered goals. Like you said, Thomas Dunn leads the way with three. Corey gets on the board with four assists. Um, just a good team effort, a lot of positives, and, and also some stuff that we were able to address and work on this week in practice and video. Obviously, throughout the season, you know, you see some guys coming in, some guys coming out. As you mentioned, you know, at the start of this, you know, injuries obviously have been, you know, a bit – uh, playing in this year, if you would, but, you know, guys coming back, you were able to add two new guys to the roster. It's always good. I mean, you have a good chemistry in here now, but it's always good to just get some new blood, you know, kind of get some new life injected as well if you want to just talk about the two new guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, obviously, like you said, injuries are a big part of our issue heading into the holiday break, and um, especially on the blue line, we were able to pit, uh Brendan Russ, a 96 right-handed defenseman from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, shortly after the break, he joined us last week for practice and was able to contribute last week and I went over Applecore. Um, he's a talented puck-moving defenseman. I think he has a high ceiling to, you know, to be able to play the game at the college level. Um, yet to be determined where he'll end up. I think he has a ton of potential, and we'll see how the rest of the season finishes out. Um, and then up front, we were able to add a forward, Greg Malafonte, from the Titans of the North American League. Um, Greg comes in here with a, a knack for finishing pucks around the net. That's what we need. Um, he's a smart hockey player, plays the game with a lot of poise, good tempo and pace to his game, and we think he'll fill a role for us being able to be a goal scorer. As you mentioned, you guys head up to New Hampshire for the EHL's January showcase, and this is a time where you guys play against the, you know, North Conference, if you would. After this weekend, it's pretty much, you know, division opponents from from now to the end of the season. So, you know, you take a look, 
again, you, you don't really see him much during the season, but you know you have the you know ability to see him on tape and stuff like that. But you know the North Conference obviously has some solid teams up there. You're gonna you know be taking on uh, Boston and, and Vermont and stuff like that. So just if you had a chance, you know you and assistant coach Bobby Dorico, what have you seen from the opponents uh, coming up this weekend? Well, the biggest thing you take from it is you look at right away at standings. The Bandits are the number one ranked team in the North. Uh, Coach Sterling's done a great job with his group this year, and he always has a well-coached team. Um, they're always offensive and can put the puck in the net, and they've been no different this year. They've got some high-end guys up front. Um, they've gotten stable goaltending all year long and, and contributions from the back line and up and down their lineup. We'll be prepared. Like you said, Bobby does a great job with our video and preparing our team for our opponents. Um, and then, you know, obviously we have the Walpole Express and the Vermont Lumberjacks, and um, no discredit to them. We're looking forward to playing them, but uh, we want to keep our focus on the Bandits right now heading into Saturday morning. All right, best of luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, fans, for all the action this weekend as the Bobcats head up north. You can watch it live on FastHockey.com. And for the upcoming schedule, as well as the remaining New York Bobcats home game, you can head to NYBobcats.com.